Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Sipsita. As always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, that's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We don't have a slow week of racing this week, that's for sure. Well, there's always something to talk about here on Horse Center, Matt. No, you're right, though. We have uh, million-dollar races at Parks Racing, their big day of the year. I think we got two really good fields, especially the Pennsylvania Derby. Let's start with that, Matt. One million dollars, grade one, nine furlongs, essential quality. The division leader is not here, but I think in Medina Spirit, Hot Rod Charlie, and Midnight Bourbon, we have three of the top three-year-olds in the country. And then we round out uh, a bunch of interesting horses behind them. So I'm pretty excited about this Pennsylvania Derby. Yeah, Brian, it's, you know, it's got everything to be excited about a uh, uh, field of 10, a um, million dollar purse, grade one, uh, uh, important race heading into the Breeders' Cup. We got an interesting pace scenario with those three uh, top contenders that you mentioned possessing so much speed. We've got some interesting closers. We got a couple horses that are lightly raced, but maybe pretty darn talented absolutely matt without further ado let's jump right in i also think it's a good betting race matt shipman let's <laughs> jump in let's start with hot rod charlie matt it's it's almost hard to believe this horse has not won a grade one race of course he won the million dollar grade two louisiana derby very nicely uh this spring but if you look at his grade one efforts the breeders cup juvenile the kentucky derby the belmont and then the haskell He's run four really good efforts in those grade one races. He's without an official win. Of course, last time in the Haskell, I thought he was the best horse in the race, but he probably deserved to come down for coming over. Midnight Bourbon was bothered. Midnight Bourbon lost his rider, Paco Lopez. Hot Rod Charlie came down. He's still without a grade one win, Matt. My feeling is he's the best horse in this race, but... We, we still need a lot to prove here in the Pennsylvania Derby. I'm going to go with your last phrase, Brian, and say, yeah, it, it, it's hard to believe with uh, uh, those kind of finish that we talked about. He still has something to prove. And, and that is, you know, finally getting to the winner's circle in one of these big races. Enough of the bad luck, enough of this, enough of that. Um, but hey, He's found himself in a really, really tough spot. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough race for sure. And I think he's the grade one races I mentioned have been nothing but tough spots. And the Louisiana Derby, even he beat horses uh, like Midnight Bourbon and Mandaloon in there. So I, I don't think he's taking a breather all year long. I will say this, Medina Spirit, in the two races they faced each other, has finished ahead of Hot Rod Charlie. I like the race that Hot Rod Charlie had in both of those races. Uh, he, I just don't feel like he had as good a trip as Medina Spirit. But hey, it's whoever finishes first. Maybe Medina Spirit beats him again. But I think Hot Rod Charlie, the seven hall, I think he can sit third or fourth early. And I, I almost like that tactical advantage here in the Pennsylvania Derby. I think that's the way the race will play out, Brian. That uh, it, it's just, you know, the way the post positions have uh drawn out that uh that should be the move for hot rod charlie is just sitting a little bit uh off of things and and we'll see what happens it's going to be close at the betting windows between uh medina spirit and hot rod charlie for favoritism i think it's going to end up going to uh medina spirit and baffert even even with everything that's gone on since the kentucky derby um i We've both been a fan of Hot Rod Charlie, but I'm left with in a question in my mind is why in this tough race are things going to change and is Hot Rod Charlie going to get the win? Yeah, and I don't think they need to change as much maybe as you do because Louisiana Derby winner, Haskell winner, taken down by the stewards. I, I don't know how much we can fault him for that. Again, I really do think he was best. Certainly Midnight Bourbon wasn't going to beat him in that race midnight bourbon was going to finish third in the hospital when hot rod charlie came over um I, I think he's the best horse in the race and races like the belmont and the Haskell kind of make me believe this but medina spirit certainly has to be respected he won the kentucky derby and maybe in the kentucky derby he did it in the first 
hundred yards or so when Johnny Velasquez got him out, out of any sort of trouble. Most of the horses had a little bit of trouble, at least Medina Spirit went right to the lead. And to his credit, he was able to stay there. Whether that result is stands up in court is yet to be seen. Medina Spirit, Matt, I will remind you that in the Preakness, we both picked Midnight Bourbon to beat Medina Spirit, and he did beat Medina Spirit. Maybe a tough race after the Derby uh, uh, was uh, not quite his very best in the Preakness, but he came back with a nice return win recently after a layoff at Del Mar beating Rocky World. Yeah, Brian. And, you know, fans of Horse Center that have been with us for all the shows uh, on the Derby Trail and in the Triple Crown series will probably be a little surprised about my position um, in that in this race. Um, I guess maybe I'm a little surprised with my position on this race uh, also, Brian. But I think with uh, Medina Spirit uh, drawn on the outside of the other speed, I, I think we're going to see the same thing happen in the Pennsylvania Derby. I think that um, Johnny V will be able to get Medina Spirit on the lead again. And they're going to have to beat him after he's in that position. I don't know what it is, but uh, Baffert horses seem to love racing at parks the last several years. Mm, that's, that's a question. That's a question for sure why Baffert horses love running at parks. But anyway, yeah, I, I'm seeing it a little bit deeper. I, I think Medina Spirit is a horse that wants to go to the lead here uh, with Johnny Velasquez. They've had success doing it. On the outside, though, I think he's going to have to work a little bit hard to do it, a little bit. The, the Derby was different where there's just so many horses and Medina Spirit was the one that was really asked. And here, he's he's got a mark on his back. He's got an X on his back. I think Midnight Bourbon right inside him is not going to want to fall behind early. So I think Midnight Bourbon is going to make his life difficult going into a much shorter run to the first turn than they have at the uh, at Churchill Downs. I also think there's another horse in here who's going to show speed too. So I think Medina Spirit might have a tough time getting that lead that he wants in here, but uh, certainly a big threat. As is Midnight Bourbon. They're all out there on the outside, Matt. Seven was Hot Rod Charlie. Nine is Medina Spirit. Eight is Midnight Bourbon. Uh, you know, he beat Medina Spirit. He stalked and went by him pretty easily in the Preakness when last they met. I really like the race he's coming out of in the Travers. Midnight Bourbon, another major threat in this Pennsylvania Derby. And another terrific three-year-old where if you look at his record, it, it, you have to be impressed with the number of, uh, of quality finishes in tough races and tough fields. Uh, in this uh, three-year-old division. And uh, Brian, his race in the Travers was, was let's face it, was, re was terrific. Uh, he set the pace. He looked like a winner. He probably would have won the race in, a, lo in, in uh, a lot of years, except for the fact that the number one horse in the three-year-old division, essential quality, was in the field. And he just was a little bit too much for him coming down the stretch. But again, uh, uh, Steve Asmussen horse uh, seems to be getting better uh, with the more racing that he does. Doesn't seem to be tailing off. But again, uh, you got these three in there. Um, something's got to give. Yeah, something's got to give. And, that, and, and maybe that's why I like Hot Rod Charlie sitting third or fourth, because I just have a feeling Medina Spirit, Midnight Bourbon are going to be a little bit more interested in the early lead from the outside. Hot Rod Charlie, you could say the same thing about him in the Belmont, if not for a superior performance by Essential Quality, just like you could say about Midnight Bourbon in the Travers. Those two are certainly running good races uh, and, and dancing pretty much every dance. Let's start talking about the others, because I think there's a, just a, a, a lot of interesting horses in here, Matt. Folsom, a little disappointing in the Indiana Derby when he had his winning streak broken, but he came back to rally nicely over cheaper, but rally nicely over the track in a Smarty Jones win. Yeah, for Brad Cox, uh, maybe Brad Cox's second string, third string, uh, a three-year-old th uh, this year, but he's really had a terrific campaign. Uh, that win uh, in the local prep in the Smarty Jones uh, um is a feather in his cap. Uh, he won the Matt Wynn at Churchill Downs. He's won four out of the last five races. 
Um, yeah, uh, not against the likes of the top three, but certainly getting the right pace set up. Yeah, I think Folsom will be more in the middle of the pack. Uh, I'm not sure I love the rail draw, but uh, he certainly will be wanting to make up some ground on the turn and early in the stretch. Number 10, Matt, American Revolution. He's a New York bred for trainer Todd Fletcher, but uh, I don't think those New York bred races should be taking too lightly because he is really looking impressive in those wins. That's for sure. And, and y y y we've learned in the last several years that just because a horse is a New York bred, um, that is not a reason to uh, uh, discount the horse because New York breds have won so many big races. American Revolution is the winner of his last three races in a row, a maiden special weight, and then two stakes races. They were all against New York breds, but as you said, Brian, the last two in the stakes races, he won handily. Yeah, he looked like a good horse, and I think maybe that New York bred uh, uh, competition is a little bit better than a lot of state bred races. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go down the list. Why Folsom and uh, American Revolution certainly are stepping up in class. We can't say that about the next horse, Not Keep me in mind, who has truly danced every dance. On the other hand, he hasn't won a race this year, but he came oh so close in the uh, Jim Dandy. Yep, Brian, and we've, you know, uh, throughout the Triple Crown Trail and, and the Derby Trail. Uh, we've talked about Keep Me In Mind so many times. Uh, uh, so the fans know that. Uh, he'll get the right pace set up for his closing move. Um, most recently, he was fourth in the Travers. Always right there. Won a heck of a lot of money, Brian, uh, with that one win that came in a graded stakes race as a maiden breaker. Um, but, you know... Again, it's a tough field. Um, he's had plenty of chances. I'm going to be more interested in others. One thing I will say about keep me in mind, I, I didn't love his Travers, but uh, maybe he's a little bit better at nine furlongs than 10 furlongs. We'll, we'll see. But I think this racetrack, Parks, is a racetrack where you can make up ground in the stretch. And we're talking about a pretty contested pace here with horses like Medina Spirit, Midnight Bourbon, Weyburn, Hot Rod Charlie. I think that might be an advantage for some closers in here. And keep me in mind is certainly one that maybe you should keep in mind as we look to that final furlong down parks at nine furlongs. I just have a feeling there's going to be some rallying going on. What about Speaker's Corner, Matt? Uh, he's only had one race this year, but it was quite a pip, an allowance race at Saratoga. It was, Brian. Uh, this is a horse that uh, was well liked from the get go. Um, trained by Bill Mott. Uh, when he broke his maiden at second asking, uh, it was again against a very strong field against names, folks that you might remember, uh, Cato River, greatest, greatest honor. Um, and then he had time off, did not, you know, did not get to run in any races on the Derby Trail or in the Triple Crown came back for Bill Mott, and that was a real corker in that race. Yes, he's lightly raced. Yes, this is a big ask in uh, this grade one, but clearly a talented horse, a well-bred horse, a well-liked horse from the get-go, and he's also getting the right pace scenario for a late run. Yeah, yeah, he, he might be one coming out of the, that seven prolonged race that uh, kind of like Folsom is more in the middle of the pack and maybe can get that first big jump uh, as they straighten out. Certainly a horse, like Matt said, full of potential, full of talent, the son of street sense. Uh, I, I am concerned that he literally, we're, the, the races we're talking about last year were just about a year between when he finally came back. That's a long time. Uh, a lot of experience to miss. I also cannot love the fact that he's never been farther than seven furlongs. I think this is a good horse. Uh, I think American Revolution is going to be proved to be a very good horse. I'm, I'm pretty high on both of their futures, maybe speakers, speakers corner even more than American Revolution. But I think American Revolution has the uh, nine furlong experience. And I think American Revolution has uh, a more uh, experience this year. I think for those reasons, this is a pretty tough spot to expect Speaker's Corner to run a huge race. 
But uh, who knows how good Speaker's Corner is. That's how good he looked in his return race. And as Matt showed, he showed lots of potential too last year. All right, we're getting to the long shots, Matt. And they're, they're not bad long shots, I'll tell you. Number four is Weyburn, the Gotham winner. I, I hated the ride he got in the Jim Dandy, but that's not why he lost the Jim Dandy. The, the reason he lost the Jim Dandy was because essential quality is just a better horse. But last time I watched as, uh, I believe it was Irad Ortiz, took him off the lead when there wasn't a whole lot of pace in the Jim Dandy and then seared him about six wide to send essential quality even wider in the Jim Dandy. I thought he gave Weber no chance to run his best race. I think, I think the uh, rider change to Paco Lopez, we'll see a different Weber in this time. We'll see a horse that's allowed to go out and be part of the pace this time, but still in this field, boy, that seemed like a pretty tough ask for a good horse. It, it certainly does, Brian. You know, there are lots of things that concern me about Weber. So many layoff lines um, in his past performances. I, I, I question his campaign. I question uh, the races that he's been in. And, and the answer to that may be uh, physical problems that, uh, you know, have changed campaigns uh, originally. Uh, the Queen's Plate, because Weyburn is an Ontario bred, was a major goal for this horse. He wasn't there, didn't run in that race. And now here he is showing up in this Pennsylvania Derby. Uh, um, tough, tough spot for Weyburn. Yeah, I clearly like him better than that. I, I, I think they just, they liked him so much, the Jimmy Jerkins barn, that they were thinking Travers Hover's Queen's Plate. He just didn't run well enough in the Jim Dandy to, to warrant a shot in the 10 furlong Travers. Uh, but I do think, again, Paco Lopez on Weyburn, I think they are going to show some speed from the four hole. One horse who won't show any speed, Matt, is the six, Burbonic. In fact, I expect Burbonic to be last early. Uh, this is a horse who surprised everybody when he won the Wood Memorial at nine furlongs this spring, beat a pretty good field there. Wasn't quite good enough in the Derby and the Preakness at uh, 10 furlongs and then 12 furlongs. But I thought his return race after a little freshening after that 12 furlong uh, uh, Belmont wasn't bad considering he was pretty far out of it at West Virginia, but he was starting to roll late up for third. Now he comes into the Penn Derby as a big long shot. Yep. Once again, he's going to be a big long shot, probably not as big as he was uh, in the Wood Memorial and a horse with a closing move uh, again, who's going to get the right pace set up. Yeah, I think he will get the race pace set up. I kind of, I kind of chuckled when he said probably not as high as the Wood Memorial, and and I thought to myself, well, he almost can't be as high as he was in the Wood Memorial. All right, the last horse on the list, Matt. We're doing the whole all field here. Is I am redeemed, coming off a real nice win over the track, but I, I just can't buy it. While I said New York breads can sometimes jump up here, I just can't buy this Pennsylvania bread can do it coming out of Pennsylvania bread races. Yeah, similar similar numbers and and appearance in the past performances. Uh, uh, I am redeemed. Also, three out of four, all three victories in uh, state bred races. Um, they were all at parks. Nice, nice Pennsylvania bred for a low profile trainer and connections. Uh, probably a real thrill for them to be in this race. But boy. Uh, that's a tough ask. Yeah, and I'm going to go on record and say if any horse coming out of state bred races runs a big race in the Penn Derby, I think it's going to be American Revolution, not I am redeemed. All right, Matt, that's our preview for the Penn Derby. Stick around, folks, for our picks. We're going to do the cotillion, though, next, Matt, and uh, maybe not as deep, maybe not as strong as the Penn Derby, but uh, it's a pretty deep, strong field in this Philly version here. Also $1 million, also grade one, this time at a mile of 16th. I think we got to start this conversation with the Phillies coming out of the Alabama. And clearly after the winner, the division leader, Malathot, Clary Air and Army Wife ran pretty darn well in the Alabama. Yeah, they did, Brian. We got the second place uh, and third place runners from the Alabama, all, all, also along with the seventh place, place runner, who we will get to also. Um, uh, uh, Horse Center fans know I've liked Army Wife um, uh, throughout uh, uh, the, the springtime and the summer. Um, I think in the Alabama, Army Wife was uh, uh, pushed 
earlier than usual, had the lead early in the race. Uh, I think uh, uh, Army Wife ran a little bit out of the typical kind of running style, um, which may have been the reason that she ended up fading a little bit down the stretch, along with the fact that Malathot was in there. Yeah, I, I think Army Wife ran a great race, and I, I kind of like the uh, more aggressive ride when there wasn't a ton of speed in that mile and a quarter race. Uh, it wasn't like she was on the lead real early in there, uh, but she made her move, and she made her presence felt the entire stretch. I thought Army Wife was second best, actually, in the Alabama. Clarier only got by late after Malathot had uh, decided to race over Army Wife uh, at the 16th pole or so. So Army Wife ran a big race. You got to respect Clarier, though, Matt. Uh, you know, after winning her debut race last year, she's run nothing in big graded stakes races all along. I guess she hasn't won since the race of Alexandra at Fairgrounds back in February, but she just continues good race after good race, including uh, uh, revving up her engine and running the entire stretch of the Alabama to be second. Uh, it, if I had to guess, I think I think much like Medina Spirit, Hot Rod Charlie, it's almost splitting hairs who they're going to decide is the favorite here. But if I had to guess, it probably would be Clarier. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Clarier, trained by Steve Asmussen, um, another one of those horses uh, uh, that, you know, has been able to keep running uh, uh, throughout the year. Uh, as you said, second in the Alabama, third in the coaching club, third in the Mother Goose since that win back in February. Clarier shows up uh, every, in these big races. She shows up and she runs well. What's not to like there? Uh, let's start talking about, because I think both Clarier and Army Wife, to different extents, want to come from a little off the pace. They're kind of uh, middle of the pack type of horses, generally speaking. But in the Baffert entry here, yes, we have another Baffert entry in this million dollar race at Parks. We have a horse with a filly with speed. Her name is Private Mission. Uh, coming out of sprint races, she looked good last time, winning the Tory Pines for fun at Del Mar. Uh, this will be a big step up in class, though, because I don't think that grade three Tory Pines had anything like she'll see Saturday in the Cotillion. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. Uh, that was a grade three, the Tory Pines, and and the the speedy filly she got you know she went out to the lead had everything her way drew off to win by by six lengths but as you said um is uh facing the you know not maybe the top couple horses in the three-year-old division but a lot of highly ranked horses um who have been running in the grade ones uh throughout the year it's a big step up step up but speed is always dangerous and Bob Baffert horses, as I said, are always dangerous at parks. Yeah, that, that's true, Matt, especially the speed is always dangerous part, because I don't think, unlike the Penn Derby, I don't think this is a race with a whole lot of speed. So I think we have to watch private mission a lot. I, I listed her as the third choice in here over a grade one winner, just because Baffert and that last race was very impressive. Again, though, all not all grade threes at Delmar are not, uh, are, are not created equally. Some I think are strong and that I just don't think that Tory Pines field was very good. So I'm going to need to see a little bit more to prove it for me for private mission, especially if she is the third choice. And the horse I listed her the third choice over Matt, the grade one winner is Maracuja. I'll tell you what, if you just look on who ran the best race out of anybody in the field, probably I would lean towards Maracuja's win in the coaching club of American Oaks. She's the only horse ever to beat Malathot. Unfortunately, she just threw in a dog with fleas last time in the Alabama. That's for sure. And, and you know, like you said, Brian, she's the only horse that has beaten Malathot. And, and that's quite a feather in this uh, Phillies cap. But seventh in the Alabama, really never a threat in, in any kind of form. I don't think it's necessarily a surprise that uh, that a horse like that would bounce after that huge, huge performance uh, in the Coaching Club American Oaks. Question is, is this enough time following the Alabama to, to get back to where she was uh, in the Coaching Club? I'm dubious. Yeah, I guess I'm a little dubious as well. If she runs back to the Coaching Club American Oaks, I think she becomes the horse to beat in here. 
but the Alabama was stinky. And coming out of that mile and quarter race after the big race, like you mentioned, it's it's hard to know if we'll see that coaching club American Oaks kind of Maracuja. I think she's got some ability. I think she showed some ability even before her winning the coaching club American Oaks. But it's a pretty tough field to have some question marks about. And that seventh place finish in the Alabama just leaves me more likely thinking that we're not going to see the very best Maracuja again on Saturday. Number eight, Matt, is always Karina. And I look at this field and I only could uh, uh, identify two horses with any kind of real speed. Uh, the first one we mentioned was the Bafford Philly Private Mention. The other one is always Karina. And always Karina is very interesting. She's never been two turns. Certainly she's bred to get two turns. And I thought her mile and a 16th race, which was at one turn at Belmont, was pretty good in the Mother Goose. Light on experience. She comes out of a very fast test where she could never get too close to the lead. And she kind of ran decently to be fourth, a very fast test, obviously. Now she comes back to a mile and 16th, two turns. I think maybe she's the one that chases private mission early. Always Korean and trained by Chad Brown. She interests me, Matt. Yeah, I agree with what you said, Brian. Um, has the look of one, you know, look of one, and and we'll have to see what happens with the two turns. If she if she turns out to like the two turns and Chad Brown uh, trainee, um, she could be a factor in the race, and obviously is going to be a nice price. Yeah, a decent price. Uh, maybe she's the fifth choice. Maybe she's even higher. But uh, I, I think she's interesting in here. And, uh, and I think there's a reason that she's going to two turns now uh, after getting some experience at one turn. Another horse with lots of experience at one turn is obligatory. Obligatory has run some very good races at one turn. I look back at her record at two turns and I'm not so certain about her though. Yeah, um, and certainly she uh, headed into the the test as as a major contender in that race and and got off to a bad start the 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 chart said she uh lost her footing coming out of the gate and and as you said brian in that speedy race she kind of lost all chance in there i, I of course i liked her performance in the acorn when she finished second that was a one turn race and is the also the winner of the eight bells um, another one, Brian, kind of, you know, like uh, always Karina, you know, is capable um, if she runs her best of being a contender to win this race. Yeah, I think that's fair, Matt. She's certain, she obviously has some class and some ability. Uh, I just I just like her better rallying from way back at one turn than I do in this spot here in the uh, cotillion on Saturday. Another horse who wants to come from behind is leader of the band. I guess she's the local horse. She's been around, uh, uh, she ran a, a big race at Monmouth Park, but she's been around parks before. She comes out of, I guess, a disappointing second, but it was a pretty good effort in the local prep for this race. Yeah, and and uh, she was the, the, appeared to be the one to beat in the Catherine Sophia off of the win in the Monmouth Oaks for, uh, uh, trainer John Service of Smarty Jones fame. Um, yeah, and, and she is absolutely going to have to fire her best shot um, like we saw in the Monmouth Oaks to win this race. And, and, and I don't know if even that will be enough. Yeah, I don't know if it, it'll be enough either, Matt, but I guess I'm looking at the Penn Derby and the Cotillion. Who do I have more faith in the favorites in the Penn Derby or the favorites in the uh, Cotillion? And I think I, I lean towards the Penn Derby favorites a little bit more as real proven horses so i think leader of the band is a possibility as a as a really nice local uh philly in here but uh yeah it's a tough spot as it is for will secret will secret's another horse who's been running in a lot of created stakes and and often hitting the board at, at, at high odds i i've i've had her in high odds uh, lower down in the exotics but uh she sure didn't look like she was better than army wife and clarier last time as a longer shot I don't know why she would beat them this time either. Yeah, I agree. I don't really see a reason why, why she's going to turn things around in this tough spot. Having said that, she did finish ahead of Clarier in the Kentucky Oaks, uh, but narrowly uh, back at Churchill Down. Last horse on the list, Matt, is all worthy. Another, uh, another pretty nice filly, another filly who likes to rally. 
But out of the nine horses in here, I like her least. I agree, Brian. You know, she last time she was third in the Charlestown Oaks, was fourth in that Monmouth Oaks. But talk about a barn that is running bad. That's the barn of Safi Joseph lately. Yeah, they have not connected. All right, all right Matt. We, we talked about the Penn Derby field in full. We talked about all nine in the cotillion. Two exciting three-year-old races, million dollars, great one. Now it's time to get down to brass tacks. I want your pick, sir. We'll start with you in the Pennsylvania Derby. With the impending scratch of Medina Spirit in the Pennsylvania Derby by Bafford, the race is not nearly as interesting as, uh, as we had hoped, but certainly Hot Rod Charlie becomes the horse to beat and a likely heavy favorite. But Hot Rod Charlie will become my top pick in the Pennsylvania Derby, and I'll stick with Speaker's Corner to make a late rally uh, and get up for second. All right, now we, we kind of have the same strategy here in the Pennsylvania Derby. My strategy is just a little bit better than yours. Uh-oh, I said it. No, it's a similar strategy. I, I, listen, I think the top three are really good. I'll give you the Baffert horse. I'm scared of the Asmussen horse, Midnight Bourbon. He's a nice horse. But I, I do really believe Hot Rod Charlie is the best horse in this race. Not significantly better than the other two favorites. But I, I think he's the best horse. I think he's only gotten better with these strong races throughout the year. Working great. I think he can sit just off the lead and make his move at the, uh, on the turn and the head of the stretch. Hot Rod Charlie is my top pick. I do see a rally in here. I, I think the pace is going to be good. I think Weyburn is going to add to that pace. I think Midnight Bourbon is going to add to that pace. So I think the pace is going to be strong. I think there's going to be some horses running down the stretch. It could be Keep Me In Mind. could be the horse that you mentioned, Folsom. But I like Bourbonic. I, I just like the way this horse is coming up to this race. He's had that one prep. It's not going to look super good on paper, but he was really running at Mountaineer. I, I like horses rallying at parks in the right situation. I think this is the right situation. I think he's going to be 30 to one or more. I like Bourbonic to get into the picture. So he'll be my second choice at, uh, in, in the Pennsylvania Derby. Matt, let's do the cotillion. But before we do the cotillion, I want to remind folks to subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation. Turn on those notifications so you never miss another episode and you never miss Matt's picks. Who do you like in the cotillion, Matt? In the cotillion, one more time with my girl, Army wife. Um, clearly in this spot, there is no Malathot in there. I think uh, Army wife is going to be able to uh, run a race more patiently and with less concern and need to be pressuring earlier in the race without Malathot in there. My second choice is obligatory. I think the Belmont runner is sitting on a big race and I'll give her another chance. So one more time with Army Wife. Yeah, uh, you picked her in the Black Eyed Susan. I picked her in the Iowa Oaks. You didn't. So we were one and one, but you went with her in the Alabama. So you picked her for a third time now. I'm going to pick her for the second time. I think Army Wife is just... Mike Maker has this filly going full bore right now. There was reasons why Maracucha beat her in the Gazelle earlier this year. Traffic, pace, so on and so forth. Her three races since then have been terrific. I think she sits a good trip as well. I like her. I like her chances in here. She's my top pick. And my second choice, I'm going to go for a little bit of odds again. Uh, this race, I don't see a lot of speed. I think always Karina will turn out to be a horse who likes kind of this middle distance two turns. And I, I just like her a little bit better than the other speed private mission. I think always Car Karina can run a good race at odds. She'll be my second choice in the cotillion. Matt, next week, I know we were talking about some big Breeders' Cup preps like the Woodward and, and, and the uh, Lucas Classic and the Awesome Again out in California. But before we talk about next week, let's get a parting shot from you, my friend. Absolutely, Brian. Um, it's good to be back with Horace Center. It's good to be with our second show with our new producer, Ben Wilkie, and enjoy the big weekend of racing at Parks. And thank you, Ben, once again, for putting together the show. Yeah, thanks to Ben. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics. Thanks to Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. They're our sponsor here at Horse Center. But most of all, I want to thank you folks for tuning in every week. We sure enjoy having you. Like I said, next week, we're going to be talking about some big, probably Breeders' Cup Classic preps. Maybe they'll turn out to be Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile preps as well. 
you have that to look forward to next week on Horse Center. We'll see you then. Thank you.